so let's start on our maps. And I did link the playlist if you scroll up the comments above. Um, it makes me happy. Hopefully it will make you happy if you're listening to it. Uh, so have your stuff ready. We won't use it yet. We're not going to use a strap um, to stretch, but we'll start on the back and get in some some just nice bridges. So feeling it too that we'll be doing some core work, but let's first stretch through the belly and then we'll get into some strengthening. So bringing the arms by the sides, feet parallel, inhale to lift the hips up. Take a moment here and really think about pulling the inner thighs down, almost like you could wrap your inner thighs down and out towards your outer thighs. Take another inhale to lift a little bit higher. And then exhale, lower all the way down. We'll do that just one more time. So really thinking parallel thighs, parallel knees, finding that opening length and lift from the hips to the knees and from the shoulders to the hips. And then lower it on down. And then find your happy babies wider than the hips. Grab your, grab your feet or your shins and just start to rock yourself out. And you can make this as fluid as you want. You can start to straighten your legs. You can even rock forward and back. So just whatever feels good here. And we'll get into some twists too for the spine as well as for the core. So bring those feet back down. Open the arms out to a T. Shift your butt a little bit to the left. Drop your knees to the right. You know the drill, but if you want to make this a little more of an, um, a bigger twist for yourself, right hand pushes down on the left thigh, and you look towards the left hand. Take a deep breath in. Deep breath out. One more inhale. And then exhale, come on to your back, and we'll do the exact same thing other way. Hips right, knees left. Again, if you want a little more oomph, left hand presses on the right. Maybe look to the right hand. Big breath in. Let it go. Exhale. Inhale. And exhale. All right. Coming back into that bridge, but we're going to start again with just a little bit of strength out from the gate. Take that mini loop band. And if you don't have one, as always, don't worry about it. We'll do enough reps that you'll feel it even if you don't have one. We'll take that band around the shin. Feet are flat just like they were. Arms are flat. We'll inhale to lift the hips up. Think about knitting the ribs towards the hips. And then just press the knees open and bring them back in. We've got 10 of these. Remember, you want your big toe side of the foot down. So really think about pressing that inner foot towards the floor. So that it's not your foot rolling. It's really you're working the muscles on the outsides of the leg. You have three more. Core is tight, just holding you up here. Two more. And last one. Okay, bring those hips down. Zip the legs together. Bring the knees to tabletop. And then widen the legs until you feel tension in the band. We'll start with pointed feet, arms by the sides. If there was kind of a gap where your low back is, that natural curve in the spine, try to take as much of that out of, um, out of the world as possible. So decreasing that space. We'll inhale to tap the toes to the ground. Pause here. There's no weight in the feet, just a light tap. And then reach the chest up, reach the arms forward, and then bring the upper body down and lift the legs up. One more really slow like that. Toes come down. They barely, barely bear any weight. Lift the shoulders, lift the arms, lift the head, come back down. Now a little bit faster. Toes tap, lift up, lower down, knees back to start. Toes, shoulders, ground, legs up. And you just keep going with this. You're gently pushing out against the band so you feel that resistance there. But we're really mostly focused on the core. Lower abdominals here. And we'll be taking core kind of throughout all of our work today, but doing a few specific core-based exercises out of the gate. You have two more legs, upper body, upper body, legs, one more. All right, bring the feet down and roll to either your right or your left hip, either one, whatever gets you facing the screen. Keeping that band on, propping your head up or letting it rest down. We'll come into our clamshell, so still working through the legs. Keep the belly strong because we will do some side plank work, so don't get too comfortable. Flip the feet, inside of the feet stay together. We open those knees out and we squeeze them back down. We have just 10 of these. 
Remember, we want to keep the hips stacked, and part of what helps us do that is keeping that core engaged. This top arm can rest behind you, in front of you. It could reach up to the sky. You are pressing that top knee as far towards the ceiling as you possibly could go, so feeling that resistance. You have three more here. Last one. And then holding the knees apart, pointing through the feet. So now the heels lift off of each other, but the big toes stay together. We'll straighten the top leg and bend it back in. Straighten the top leg and bend it back in. You have eight, seven, feeling this in the glutes, six, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, bring the legs down, straighten through the legs and come into either a forearm plank or a straight arm side plank. So lifting the hips off the ground. Let's see today if we can keep the legs stacked, mainly because we have that band on. Lift the top arm up. And you can stay here. If you're like, I just really need to rock out the simplest version of side plank, go for it. If you're looking for a little more, lift that top leg up, push against the band, and we have 15 seconds here. You could also move that top arm overhead. You could bring it to the hip. You could move it around to give it a little bit of action. Just keep pressing those hips up. If the top leg is up, lift it a little higher and come on down. Before we go to the other side, we often think about the core as just the front of the torso, but we also want to strengthen through the back and still engage through the belly. We'll roll onto that belly. Option if you want. Arms are going to start bent out to the sides. Option to add those light weights, but really check in. How do your shoulders feel? How does your low back feel? Because even these light weights can feel a little too heavy if you have any injuries or soreness there. We're going to take the legs wider than the hips, untucking those toes, forehead down. Before you do anything else, just think about pulling the belly to the spine. So really finding that sense of contraction. And just do that a few times. This is a move you can't tell I'm doing it probably. And if I could see you, I probably couldn't tell that you were doing it. But you're trying to lift your belly button up and then bringing it back down, up and down. The next time you come up, stay up. Lift your arms, but keep your feet down. Your arms are bent to 90 degrees. Take a big breath in. Maybe lift your back a little higher. Big breath out. Come back down. We'll do this five more times. Inhale to lift up. Elbows are bent. Exhale to gently come down. Inhale to lift up. Think about also pulling the shoulder blades towards each other. Feet stay down, lift up, inhale. Take the torso down, exhale. Two more, inhale, lift up. Exhale, come down. Last one, inhale, lift up. This time, lift your feet, push your legs against the bands and find a pulse, out, out, out. If this feels okay in the arms, start to straighten the arms out to the side, stay for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Arms down. Legs down, come into child's pose because we still have the loop band on. Keep the legs narrow, drop the forehead down. And if you want to come out of the shape or say you want to take a twist, today's warm up is admittedly shorter than usual. So feel free when we take breaks between moves to kind of come into your own stretches, your own mobility, exercises to grab that water. And then whenever you're ready to, we'll flip onto the other side. So I started with my left side. I'll come on to my right side. We're coming into those clamshells. So again, just get, get cozy. Insides of the feet together. Belly to the spine. Just remember to keep that action going. Top arm wherever. Lift your feet. And we'll start to open those knees. Top knee up. Bring it down. For nine. Eight. Really pushing as hard as you can. Seven, six, five, four, three. We'll point the feet in two. All right, hold the knees apart. Point the feet so the heels are apart. Straighten the top leg and bend for nine. Make sure the band is not on your kneecap. It's below the kneecap for sure.
four more to go. Two more until side plank. All right, straightening those legs out, coming to side plank. Again, you could choose your forearm or your straight arm. We'll lift the hip, stacking the feet again because that makes the most sense given we have the band. Top arm is up or somewhere else. Maybe the top leg lifts and we have 15 seconds on the clock. And again, you could make this more interesting by moving that arm, by stretching through the shoulder. But keep lifting the hip, and if you have the leg up, keep lifting the leg. Push against the band like you're trying to break it. Stay for three, two, one. Okay, we're coming into forearm plank. We're going to skip the back work and go right into forearm plank. Make sure your arms are at that 11 o'clock. Hands are spread wide. So no fists for this version. Tuck the toes. Take the legs back. We're going to walk the right leg out, the left leg out, the right leg in, the left leg in. And we'll continue that pattern out, out, in, in for 30 seconds. Keeping the belly button to the spine, this is the last move we'll do with the band, and then we'll take it off. So find that plank. Legs are fairly close. And then 30 seconds to walk it out. As you do this, make sure that your hips aren't sagging or piking. Out, out, in, in. So creating that. Feeling the tension on the band. Keep pushing down into those forearms. Almost there. Last three, two, one. Okay, drop to those knees. Take that band off. Child's pose this time may be a wide version. Knees wide, big toes touch, hips to heels. And you rest that forehead side to side. And again, any movement you want, maybe this is also a good time for a water break. Awesome. Really great group today. Always good to see you all. Okay. If you hydrated, come on back in. We're going to grab those weights and come to a seat. So if you stood up, come on back down. Coming into... A long spine to start. Arms are forward, palms are up. Option to do this without weights if the weights feel like too much. Weights add a little bit of resistance. We'll tuck the chin and round the back. So pretty much a Pilates C curve. And then we'll roll back up to a straight spine. We'll do five of those. And then we'll keep the back straight, lean back, and turn the palms down and up. If this doesn't feel like a core exercise enough for you, then you're lifting your legs bent or straight, and we'll do that one for 30 seconds, okay? Get ready for that C-curve action. Palms up, feet flat, and here we go. Round the spine to come back as low as you can go without touching the ground, and then push it up. Round it in, push it up. Round it in, push it up. We'll inhale on the rounding, and exhale on the lifting. Two more. Last one. And then the 30 seconds start straight back, lean back, maybe lift the legs, palms turn down and up, down and up. And it's really a rotation in the arms. If you need even more, you have straight legs. Belly pulls to the spine. The only thing moving the body are the arms. It maybe seems kind of silly, like what are we doing with our arms? But we're really trying to test the core strength. We're also activating through the shoulders, finding some rotation in the shoulder socket as well. Last five, four, three, two, one. All right, bring it up. Take those weights down for a moment and come to the long side of your mat. Come into a straddle. It doesn't have to be a wide straddle. And in fact, the next move is actually a little bit easier if the legs are more in a V. Because we might not have access to yoga blocks, and a lot of times it's true, we'll do this next exercise with yoga blocks. I'm actually going to have you, if you want a little elevation, to hold your weight and push down, or you could be on your fingertips. We're going to take the arms around either leg first. I'm going to start with my left leg, but you could start with your right leg. We're going to point through the feet and just lift the leg that we have the body facing. We'll take 10 lifts of that leg, 10 lifts of the other leg, and then whichever kind of arm position you prefer, we're going to try to lift both legs for 10. Some keys to this, 
are slightly pulling the belly in and slightly leaning forward. So really thinking about lower abdominals and obviously hip flexors lifting that leg up, but don't let your belly get kind of soft and relaxed here. Keep that sense of core engagement. So go ahead and find your first side, whichever side, it doesn't matter. Really point through the feet, push down, and then here we go, little lift up. If your leg is slamming down on the floor, make this smaller, okay? We don't want to slam the leg. We want to control the leg. You might be doing it a little too high. Last four, three, two, one. Switch hands, face the other leg, same deal, other side. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Whatever side felt stronger for you, take the hands there and try to lift both legs. This is the doozy for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, ooh, 5, 4, 3. Little bonus, 2. Try to stay up on 1 for 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay, we'll take a moment to stretch. We'll keep the straddle. Maybe you go into a little wider straddle. You can relax your feet. Think about hinging from the hips, keeping the back long, and walking forward. And you might take one or two hands paces forward and say, I'm it. That's, that's good. Or you might go farther. So whatever your body needs, whatever space you have, fold into it. Take three breaths here. All right. And take a little bit of a hip flexor stretch before we go into the next round of moves. So peppering again our stretches today throughout class. We'll bend the right knee in front of us. We'll bend the left knee behind us. And start to walk your body back at an angle away from the left knee. And you might walk back to your hands. And we're trying to get a stretch in that left, so as not left hip flexors area. So you might stay there. You might drop down to one elbow or both, and some of you might lay all the way down. Again, it's the back leg, front of that hip that we're trying to stretch. So when you feel that, and hopefully you do, you kind of stop when you hit your edge and find a couple of breaths. And coming out of it, just making sure you're using your arms, your hands. If you need to move your weight to one side, do it. And then switch. Left leg forward, right leg back. Now we're angling back between the legs. Again, hands, if that doesn't feel like enough of a stretch, you're on your forearm. If that doesn't feel like enough of a stretch, you're laying all the way down. And you may wonder, should this right knee be on the ground or off? Ideally, the inside of the knee is on the ground or close to the ground. But if you're super tight, it might be that that knee is up, and that, that's fine. So you're stopping where the stretch is happening for you. And then come on up. All right. Shake those legs out, and we'll go ahead and stand on up. Okay. So we did a lot of floor work, really focusing on the core, adding in a little bit of arms and glutes. And now really coming into core where we're focused on balance and strength. We'll start out heels together, toes apart. If you feel like you want to hold on to something, you could always turn to face a wall if you're near a wall or hold on to a countertop or something. But I'm going to cue all of this as if we don't have something. Just know that you can grab something if you need to. Hands on the hips for now. We're going to re repeat this with weights, but for now, hands on the hips. Heels together, toes apart, that first position, really zipping the inner thighs in. We'll inhale to lift the heels up and exhale to come down. So just 10 of these really simple calf raises. If you notice that your heels are kind of gradually getting wider apart, you want to think about squeezing a piece of paper between the inner thighs so that every time your heels are on the ground, the heels are touching, if not really close. A lot of glute work here. Last two. Last one. Now we'll pulse the heels up for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one, lower the heel. We'll take a demi-plie, that little squat. Bend the knees, straighten the legs for 10, 9. Feet stay flat. Head stays over shoulders. Shoulder stays over hips. Belly is tight. Breathing in, breathing out for 5, 4, 
three, two. Stay in that squat. Lift the heels a little bit and start to pulse the hips up for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Lower the heels. We'll take either leg. Again, it doesn't matter what leg you start with. You might want to start with the leg forward where the standing leg feels strongest. And for me, that's with my right leg as the standing leg and my left leg as the forward leg. So again, you do you. We're going to switch sides right after this. Forward leg lift. We've got 10 here, then 10 pulses. Then we'll bend that knee and take it out to the side and then straighten the leg and bring it forward. Your hips are not moving there. They stay really, really forward. So again, it's that core work. It's that standing leg inner thigh. It's that standing leg glute. So let's go ahead and find that place, your strongest standing leg first. And here we go. Leg lift for 10, 9, 8. As you're going here, you're not leaning forward. You're not leaning back. You're staying really tall. You're letting the leg lift however high it's going to lift today. Last three, two, one. Hold the leg up. Little pulses. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Hold the leg up. Knee comes out to the side. Press it back forward for nine, eight. And this might be the one where you're holding onto your wall. My wall behind me is close enough to touch. Last three, two, one. Hold that leg out. Bonus move. We're going to pulse that knee up, 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 up. You can take a punchy exhale here for three, two, one. Open the legs wide for your plie squat, and then we'll get into the other side. Knees and toes, as you all know, they turn out. Your knees and toes are going in the same direction, but your knees are not over your toes in this kind of shorter stance. The knees are over the ankles here in that really deep, wide stance. We'll go ahead and bring the arms out to the side. Palms up, shoulders drop down, maybe shake the head out. We'll lift up an inch and down an inch. We'll do 10 of those. Then we'll lift the heels up an inch and down an inch. Then we'll straighten the legs and lift the heels and then come all the way down for 10. So just preparing you, getting your quads prepared. Find that starting place, arms out wide, hips first, up and down. And I always guesstimate as an inch, at an inch. So feel free if you're like, maybe I'm going four inches, maybe I'm going a third of an inch. It doesn't really matter. It's just the point that it's pretty small. It's small, but it's slower than a pulse. Three more. I'm already feeling it. I don't know about you. Last one, and then stay down, heels up an inch and down an inch. So if you tend to lift your heels super high, that's great, but trying to stop yourself, trying to find some control here for three, two, one, heels down, heels up, lift the legs, straighten, drop the heels and bend for nine, eight. Seven, really squeezing the booty at the top. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, do what you need to do. Stretch it out, shake it out, hydrate. And then we'll get into the other side. So just remember what leg you use. Again, I use my left leg to lift because my right leg is stronger at standing. Now, go the other side. Hands on hips, heels together, toes apart. Bring the leg, second leg forward, 10 lifts. Here we go. Get really, really tall for your standing leg. Imagine that there's kind of a string that runs from your heel of that leg all the way through the crown of your head. And you want that string to be really taut. Last two. Hold the leg up, little pulses. Again, it's not about the height of the leg here. It's about keeping the leg long and turned out so the knee is facing the side. Last three, two, one. Now the doozy. We bend that knee out to the side and then push the leg straight forward. 
Again, if you have a wall or counter you want to touch, go for it. And then if you feel like you regain your balance, maybe you take your hand off again and just see what happens. We'll take that little bonus pulse from the side in three, two, one. Hold it out to the side, little lift. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, grab those light weights. We'll come back to that same sequence and play squat. Ten hips up, ten heels up, ten heels and hips straighten and bend. We'll take those arms out to the side, palms up. Sit low, here we go, up and down for 10. Feet are wide, nine, eight. Is proud and broad. Last four, three, two, one. Stay low, heels, 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, Three, two, one. Legs, heels, excuse me, and hips for nine, eight. We lift and drop. Seven, six, five, four more. We'll keep the weights. Last two, last one. Building on bicep curls for 10, nine, eight. Stay low in the hips. Seven, six, five. Four, we'll take it to pulses in three, two, one, pulse it in, 10, nine, eight, seven, six, sit lower, five, four, three, two, one. Bring the arms out to the side, find a 90 degree, we're lifting the elbows up an inch, down an inch for 10, nine, little pushes, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, now elbows into the waist and back to 90 for 10, nine. There's a bigger movement here to be had, eight. Stay low in the squat. Last four, three, two, one. Okay, bring the arms down, keep the weights though, heel to the legs, give them a shake. All right, coming into some core with balance. So we can sort of tap into our imaginary TRX that's around us. Coming into our lunge, right leg forward, left leg back. We'll start with the back leg long, tipping the body weight forward, reaching the arms down at an angle, palms are turned in. From this place, we'll push into the right foot, lift the left leg, and take 10 hamstring curls. If like me, you get into it and immediately that ankle rolls, two things you can do. Really think about spreading the toes, grounding the big toe side, and or bend the bottom knee. Okay, we'll start there, right leg, then we'll do left, then we'll build onto that. Right leg forward, left leg back. Find your lunge, tip it forward, reach the arms at that angle, push off of the two feet onto the right foot, flex the left foot, here we go, heel to butt for 10. Really think about your core, it is supporting you in this balance. If you need to, you can slow this down. Try not to speed it up too much. Last two, one. Okay, give a quick shake. Same deal, left leg forward. Find your lunge. Lean forward, bring the arms at that angle. Two feet to one foot, right leg off the ground. Here we go, 10. Heel to butt, nine, eight, seven. Belly to spine, six, five, four, three, two, one. Stand it up, shake it out. Okay, building on to that. Right leg forward, left leg back. Same start, same balance. This time, just five hamstring curls, and then we'll take five rows. Then five hamstring curls, and we'll take five bicep curls. So we're staying in that long line of energy. And if all of this is like, whoa, I'm rocking and rolling, I'm feeling crazy in my house, again, use your wall, your countertop, and don't worry about the weight. Maybe focus more on the balance. So let's set it up. Let's give it a try. 
find your lunge, find your angle forward. When you're ready, push off just the leg, five, four. Again, think about the core as the support. Last one, and then those rows, five, elbows by the waist, four, three, two, one, leg again, five, curl, four, three, two, one, biceps, palms forward, five, four, three, two, one. Stand it up, shake it out. And if anyone was feeling kind of pressure in the low back, that's where it can be helpful to think if you feel like there's too much of a swing of the back happening, of slightly tucking the tailbone under, of making a shorter distance between the bottom ribs and the top of the hips can help you protect your back a little more. So let's go onto the left side, same deal, and then we'll come into something new and different. <laughs> Angle it forward, tip it forward, find your hamstrings. There we go, five, four, three, two, one, row, five, four, elbows close to the body, three, two, one, leg again, five. And if you're wobbling and rocking, try if you fall out to come back in and don't worry about it. Bicep curls, palms forward, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, let it go. Drop those weights. Right leg forward, left leg back. This time we'll stay elevated in the spine and in the torso, but still thinking about ribs and belly in, shoulders relaxed. Hands can be on the hips or wherever. We're going to bend the back knee a little bit to be able to push off, drive this knee up, tap it back. We'll take 30 seconds here. If you want more, if you say want to hop it and you feel okay in the right knee, go for it. Once again, we're thinking about this as a balance exercise, as a core exercise. I'm trying to find the watch. Found it. Okay. Set yourself up. Right leg forward, left leg back. Little bend in that left knee, and here we go. That knee drive up and down, or that little hop up and down. Again, checking in with that knee. If you've been doing a lot of jumping lately, maybe that knee is not feeling it, or you've been doing a lot of running. You came here tonight to build strength. Maybe you don't hop. Keep going for five, four, three, two, one. Left side, set it up. Left leg forward, right leg back. Knee drive straight or hop. Here we go. And one side may feel a lot more comfortable jumping than the other side. Weight back, weight up. How high can you pull that back knee into the chest? We're going to be building onto that in a moment. Keep going with it. You can move as fast as you want. You can move much faster than I was going if you're okay with it. Last three, two, one. Okay, shake it out. Again, building onto that. Don't jump this guy because we're going to stay in that knee drive. So we'll all take the lunge into the knee drive. And we'll work on pulling that knee up as high as we can. Almost think about this as a standing crunch, but instead of actually crunching in, the crunch is happening by just contracting the low belly and trying to find flexion in that hip. We'll do 10 of those. And then keeping that knee as high as we can, we'll take 10 straightens and bends. And then hold the bend and try 10 calf raises. Again, all subtle core work as well as strengthening through the legs. So let's give it a go. Right leg forward, left leg back, arms again, wherever you want them to be. Bend both knees, drive that left knee forward, and here we go for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, tall through the right leg, 4, 3, 2, hold it up, straighten and bend, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, Three, two, one, hold the bend. Try 10 calf raises. If that right knee is buckling, don't worry about the heel going so high. Think about lifting the quads off of the knee, squeezing the butt for four, three, two, one. 
two, one. Okay, give it a shake if you want a quick stretch of that right calf, step the leg back. And we'll take it to the other side. Set up your lunge, left forward, right back. Bend the back knee, stand it up tall, core engage, pulse 10, nine. Again, you're trying to lift that knee as high as you can every time. Last three, two, one, straighten it, bend, kick it out. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, hold the bend, calf raises. And this might go a little slower. If you tend to curl your toes and kind of really try to pull your mat, think about spreading the toes, pushing down to lift up. Last three, two, one. Again, if you want to stretch that left calf, any other stretches you want as well, also a great time to get water. Okay, Doke. A couple more um, standing moves, and then we'll finish with core on the ground. We'll use the glides for some standing work, but we'll also use the glides for our plank as well. So grab one of your glides. As always, if you do not have a glide, then if you have hardwood floors, you can wear a sock and or grab a rag or a small towel and put it under your foot. Both of those work. We'll have the right leg forward, the left leg on the glide. We'll glide back into lunge, come in, and then take a side lunge, bending that same glide leg out. That's your bent leg is your glide leg. Come back in. Back lunge, center, side lunge, okay? We'll take 30 seconds here, so feel free to go as fast as you want to go. And you might need to get your mat out of the way. Okay, set yourself up. 30 seconds on the clock. And here we go. Back lunge, center, side lunge. And this is always the one in class that kind of gets our brains a little mixed up because we want to bend the standing leg in the side lunge. But it's the glide leg that is the bending leg. That's the harder way to do this. That's the way we're going to do it today. Shoulders overhead for the back lunge. You can lean it forward for the side lunge. We will be doing this one more time with some weights after we do the left side. Last three, two, one. Okay, bring it on up. Go ahead and switch on around to the other side. Same move. 30 seconds on the clock. Here we go. Gliding it back, pulling in. Again, the glide leg is the bending leg for the side lunge. Dropping that weight to the side. The work happens in the standing leg. So for side lunge, standing leg is straight and strong. Breath is flowing. Last three, two, one. Okay, we're going to take that same movement same 30 seconds, but grab your weights. All right. For the back lunge, we'll bring the arms forward. For the side lunge, turn the palms in. Take it to a fly. And these could be bent elbows or straight arms, but we're pulling the arms apart. We're squeezing the shoulder blades on the back. Okay? Arms forward when we lunge back. Arms out when we lunge side. Palms are facing the ground at first and then facing each other. Set yourself up. 30 seconds on the clock starts now. Back, stand, side, stand. And maybe now it's a little less kind of pat the head, rub the tummy in terms of which leg is bending for side lunge. Again, that sneaky core work where the more we have the core engaged, the more fluid this feels, the stronger it feels. Last three, two, one. Okay, take it to the other side. Set yourself up. Here we go. Lunge back, reach forward. Lunge side, reach out. Dropping that weight out to the glide side. 
Keeping the weight over the standing leg, though, when you're lunging back. Strong arms, strong back. Strong legs and strong belly. We're there in five, four, three, two, one. Okay. Ditch your weights. Ditch your glides for now. If, like me, you move that mat, bring it back in. We're going to take it to the mat for some more core and some more upper body. We'll start first with triceps. So we'll come down on either side. I'm starting with my left hip down, my right hip closest to the ceiling. Just like the clamshells, I have my legs stacked. I'm going to take my bottom arm down. I'm just going to hug my top arm under my bottom rib. I'm going to turn my bottom hand fingers to face forward. From here, I'm going to bend that elbow back, lean down, and then lift up. I'm keeping my side waist really, really strong, and I'm keeping the core really strong. We have 10. Here we go for 10, 9, 8. And you can always walk that hand out farther to make this harder. 6, 5, Four, three, two. Hold it down. Little pulses in the elbow for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. We will build onto that side plank on your hand. Make sure, though, you turn your fingers to face the side or on your elbow. Pat it up if you need to. Stack in the legs this time or bottom knee bent version as a mod. We'll lift it up. This time, top arm, hand comes behind head. We'll lift that top leg, pull the knee into the chest, and push it out for 10, 9, 8, 7, building that great strength, 5, 4, 3, 2, little sneaky, hold it in, 10, 9, 8, Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Come down onto your hip. Lay all the way down. So extend the arm out. Again, you can prop up your head. Bottom leg. So again, if I'm on my left hip like I am, my left leg is now going to be doing some movement. My right leg is going to get out of the way. It could either come over that bottom leg or behind it. I prefer behind, but you decide what feels more stable laying on the side of your hip. Bottom leg, foot is flexed, leg is angled slightly forward of the hip. This top arm, you may want to use it as resistance, pressing down. We're going to lift the top leg up, squeeze it down. We do this move in bar X, as you all know, often in the beginning of class, with the feet in the strap. Unfortunately, we can't suspend ourselves in air like that today, but we can still get that move in. We can still get those inner thighs working. Keep pushing out through that bottom heel. Keep drawing the bottom foot toes towards the face. Maybe you're starting to feel that connection between core and inner thigh, core and leg lifting. Last three, two, step on one, point the foot, little pulses up, 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 up. And you may decide that you want to take some <sighs> exhale breath. We have five, four, three, Two, one. Okay, take that top leg and bring it on top of the bottom leg. Reflex the feet, re-bring that hand down. We're going to lift the top leg up, then the bottom leg up, top leg down, bottom leg down. And if you feel like this is better suited for your body with feet pointed, go for it. We have 10, connection between core and legs. Here we go. Up, up, down, down, up up, down, down. However high your top leg goes, your bottom leg meets it. You squeeze those inner thighs together. If this hurts the side of your hip, you may want to lay on a blanket or a pillow, something a little softer so that you can do this without that weird kind of pain in the bones. We're almost there. We're going to get a little bonus in too. And one, 
Hold the top leg up. If you've been flexing the foot, point it. Take this bottom leg, do the same thing with the foot and little pulses. Top leg tries to keep the bottom for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay, before we do that whole sequence on the other side, come onto your belly like we did really early in class. This time legs together, bend the elbows, forehead down. Lots of hamstrings today. We're going to flex the feet. We've done this the past couple of weeks when I've taught um, virtual bar. So hopefully it's still too new. Your upper body can completely relax. Feet will lift off the ground. Again, they're flexed. And even this action, you should feel like, wow, okay, this is, this is effort for my body. From here, we're going to bend knees and pull the heels in and push the legs out. We'll take 10 of those hamstring curls, both legs at the same time. Then we'll hold the bend of the knees and lift the head and the arms up and tap it down. So getting a little bit of that core work for the back in on the action. Okay, set yourself up. Legs straight, tuck the toes. Maybe even take that back to the belly contractions. Lift the legs, they're straight at first, and then bend and straighten for nine, eight. Seven, your kneecaps are off the ground. Six, five, four, three. Support your back with your belly. Two, hold the bend in the knees. Lift your head and arms up. Tap it down for nine. Eight, your kneecaps are still off the ground. Six, five, four, three, two. The next time you come up, hold it up. Reach the arms back. Stay for five, four, three, two, one. Come down. Shake it out. Take a moment for child's pose. And then we'll quickly stretch the hamstrings before we get into all of that work on the other side. When you come out of your child's pose, just lay on your back. Briefly, briefly. Right leg over the body, holding anywhere along the leg that feels comfortable to grab and where you don't have to lift your head up. Relax your head. This is all about the back of the leg. Let your breath slow down if it got a little elevated. And then when you're ready to take it to the other leg. Again, this shouldn't feel like effort for the neck or the shoulders or the head. Okay, good news. You're going to the other side, so maybe you can just roll onto the other hip. We'll start with those triceps. So we're lifting the body up. We're turning the bottom hand fingers forward. We're taking that top arm and just basically hugging the rib. 10 of these little side tricep dips, here we go, for 10, nine. We're going both down and out with the weight. Five more until that little pulse. Last one. And then pulse it out, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay, side plank time. Again, on the forearm or on the hand. Legs are extended on top of each other or the bottom knee is on the ground. Lift the hips up. Top hand behind the head. Top knee crunches in and presses out. Here we go, 10, 9. Try to pull that knee in. We did standing up. Now we're just doing it a side plank. Adding a little more, a little more oomph. Last four. Three. We'll pulse it out in two. One. Hold it in. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Okay. Coming down. Coming into that inner thigh work. You can lay all the way down and prop your head or lay your head on your bicep. Bottom leg, I'm on my right hip, so my bottom leg is my right leg. Top leg, front or behind, again, whatever you prefer. Leg is a little forward of the hip. Decide whether you want to flex or point the foot. We did a flex foot last time, but maybe you want to point this one. And we'll lift the leg up and down. So just finding that squeeze both in the inner thigh and in the low belly. It's one of those, like, how high can you lift it without also rolling onto your back at all? We're unstacking the hips. Deceptively challenging this guy. 
Last four. Three, two, one. Hold it up. Maybe change your foot. Little lift for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Take that leg that's been hanging out. Bring it on top of the other. Again, flexed or pointed. We go up, up, down, down. Ten times here we go. Firm up the core. This is also can be helpful when the top hand presses down, but you don't want to feel like you're doing shoulder work or tricep work or bicep work here. This is really, again, inner thighs, core. Up, up, down, down. However high top leg goes, bottom leg needs to come up to meet it. Last three. Two. One. Okay, same move we did before, but top leg lifts, bottom leg comes to meet it for 10, 9, squeeze, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay, this time we're coming into forearm plank again. We tap. We'll touch the toes and we'll start to tap right knee, left knee, right knee, left knee. So it becomes this march. Again, deceptively hard in that sometimes it's easy to get into a little bit of a back bend situation or to let the hips kind of pike up and down. Torso stays really tight, really neutral. All we're doing is moving the knees. So everything else is really calm. We have 30 seconds here. I'll get my watch so we don't go over. Find your farm plank. And here we go. Knee, knee. We're not bearing any weight on either knee. These are very light. And if you don't touch the ground, that's fine. You're getting close, and then you're straightening the leg. And if someone were to just see you from the hips up, they would just think you're doing a farm plank. Little would they know that you're moving your knees. We're going to add on to this. Both knees are up, soft forward, and back for 30 seconds. It can be helpful here, again, if you're getting pain in that low back to shorten the space between ribs and hips to slightly tuck the tail. Halfway there with the saw. I know we're not quite done, but we're almost done. We're gonna come into that half side plank twist. We do this sometimes in yoga bar. I'm gonna bring it into bar X tonight. The next time you come, shoulders over elbows stay. Twist your hips to the right, back to center. Stay going to the right. Only doing 15 seconds on each side. You have three, two, one. 15 on the left. Twist, center, twist, center. Push down into the hands and forearms. Five, four, three, two, one. Come center, lower onto your hips. Untuck the toes. Lift the chest, just straight forward. And then push in the hands and lift the elbows. And it might be a baby lift. You might straighten the arm. Take a deep breath in. If your shoulders are lifted up to your ears, maybe walk your hands wider or come onto your fingertips so that you can pull the shoulders away. You can get some length in the neck. And then gently lower yourself down. Press back, wide knee, child's pose. Take a twist. The left hand will stay where it is. Right arm will thread under the left armpit and drop to the right side of the face. We often do this with the butt in the air. Today we're doing it in child's pose. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. Keeping the right arm where it is. Take the left arm up and behind the back. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. All right, coming back through center. Other side, right hand stays. Left arm threads. Drop it down. Find your breath. And then this right arm comes behind the back. Again, take that full round of breath. And we'll come into down dog, finishing standing for our breath. If you need to pedal out the knees, go for it. If you need any other movement, find it. And then we'll start to walk the hands back to the feet. When you get there, just let yourself hang and as slowly as you can, roll it up. 
Your body is heavy until the very end. When you get to stand, reach up, look up. Exhale, arms by the sides. We'll do that one more time. Bend the knees, inhale, reach it up. Exhale, take it down. Happy Tuesday night. Thank you all for joining.